What's up and welcome to another edition of the Cover 2 Recap. I'm BruinSportsport.com publisher Edward Lewis. As always, this is Ryan Karchi, the UCLA beat writer for the OC Register. We're here tonight at the StubHub Center where UCLA just wrapped up its spring and its spring game. And Ryan, as far as spring games go, I know they're generally usually very boring. Uh, they're generally pretty terrible. They generally don't have a whole lot of fanfare, a lot of fireworks. All things that are true. <laughs> but tonight, I really thought this was a very well job well done by Jim Moore and the Bruins. I think playing it here at the StubHub Center, closer to Westwood and closer to the city, created a different dynamic, a different vibe. It created a little more better atmosphere for recruits. Uh, in terms of putting 15,000 people in here versus 15,000 people in the Rose Bowl, it certainly looked a lot better on TV. And I just thought the general overall product with live hitting and, and running and playing and cracking helmets was just a better feel than, than most spring games, especially here at UCLA in the past. Especially when you look, when you compare this game to last year's quote unquote showcase, uh, this definitely stood out compared to that. I mean, last year was pretty tough to watch. This, at least for a half, we got, you know, we got some good stuff. We got to watch. You know, the backup quarterbacks was interesting for a little while. Uh, the defense, I thought, impressed uh, more so than I thought. There was kind of a lack of fireworks. This wasn't a game where you were going to see a lot of big plays. I think the biggest play of the, of the day went 37 yards. No running back had a carry, or one running back only had a carry over 10 yards. So it wasn't a, wasn't exactly the show, maybe, that, that Jim Moore had promised. But as, as far as spring games go, you're right. I thought this was well put together and, and put on quite well. And I thought part of the reason for that lack of fireworks was because of the quarterback play. You know, mm -hmm. we, we had examined it all month long. And, you know, Brett Hundley looked good tonight. He started the drive, I think, four for five, and yep. then left the game, uh, you know, because he's Brett Hundley. And we got to see the backup quarterbacks and quite frankly I didn't think a single one of them played very well if you had to put down who was the best I think Mike Faithful gets the nod which is saying a lot because yeah. he's a walk-on and the other two were pretty touted kids in terms of Jerry Neuheisel being a 22 year old sophomore and Ashanti Willard being a rivals 150 guy but tell me your your thoughts on the backup QBs and where you say it goes from here you know I thought with Jerry Neuheisel uh, yeah I complimented his consistency a lot this spring I thought he was more confident and I thought that definitely boded well for him he came to this game in my opinion, clearly the number two quarterback. He just had a few throws today that were that were bad. I mean, to to put it, you, I don't think you can put it any lighter than that. Uh, he threw two interceptions, both of which were very obviously into coverage on the run when he shouldn't have made the pa those passes. I was not exactly thrilled with his performance. I know uh, Noel Mazzoni kind of pointed at those and and said that that was kind of what he needed Newhasel to do better. As far as Ashanti Willard goes. Same sort of ups and downs we've saw, seen all spring. He had a few throws that were good. He also had one drive when his team took over, I think, at the 25-yard line after an Ish Adams interception, and he went three and out. I mean, that's... Actually backed up yards. Yeah, he actually backed up yards, got sacked once. Um, as far as that goes, that's not exactly what you want to see out of your backup quarterback. Um, but if they can keep Brett Hundley healthy, it, I mean, it won't matter at this point. you got Josh Rosen, the number one quarterback in the nation, coming in the next year. Maybe we never even see these guys on the field. They're certainly taking every precaution in terms of keeping Brett Hundley healthy. Uh, they might have even limited his autographs. You don't want to get his hand too, too tired before the game. Not to be fair, the pass rush was really kind of the reason maybe these quarterbacks struggled mm -hmm. tonight. I know specifically Colby Seibert could not control Deion Hollins on the outside when Ashanti Wooler was trying to throw. And vice versa, on the other side, Jerry Neuheisel and Mike Faithful looking at O.O. Diggy Zua's front side mm -hmm. in their face all day long. Tell me about kind of the pass rush tonight and how that affected the whole game. I was most impressed by O.O. Diggy Zua. I mean, this is a guy who has been out an entire year after hip surgery. Uh, he told us, he, and, and you know the coaches told us too, he was very eager to get out here, and that showed almost immediately. I mean, he got better. Jim Moore kind of noted that he got better even as the game went along. I know we had him down for five sacks of the press box. They only counted him for two, which I'm pretty sure, pretty sure pretty <laughs> sure that Not was right. wrong. There was definitely more than that. Hard to tell with you know quarterbacks having no contact jerseys on, uh, but he was by far the star of this spring game in my opinion. He was you know Caleb Benenock. I've been all about complimenting him all spring long. He was just manhandling Caleb Benenock, and I, I, at this point I think he might be he might be the best player on that defensive line. Even uh, I think at this point he's definitely come in even stronger than after and then before his hip surgery. Uh, his, he worked on his pass rushing all throughout the offseason, kind of focused on those techniques while he was sitting out for the entire year before that. And you can tell this, this is a guy who's definitely primed for a breakout season, it seems like. Now, he was one of the top performers of the night. Give me some of the other top performers that kind of stood out to you and, and who you thought played well in this spring game. Well, we talked a little bit about the pass rush. The one guy who, who also stood out in that was Deion Hollins. 
I mean, he's a guy, he's had his ups and downs in the spring. Uh, Jeff Ulbricht kind of told us that his health has kind of been, you know, iffy over the past year. He, he's kind of had like a hip back thing, Ulbricht said. Um, and that's kind of limited his speed in that first step that everyone, you know, gawked at when he first got here. He looked great today. He, like you said, he was getting around Colby Seibert uh, pretty easily. He, I think he was recorded with two sacks. He might have had even more than that. Um, at this point, I, I know Jeff Ulbrich said that he was a little weary of the pass rush without Anthony Barr, Cash Marsh, Keenan Graham. Uh, but, you know, with guys like Hollins, guys like uh, O.O. Digizua coming in and, and doing as well as they did today, I'd say there's a little bit less to be worried about going into the, into the fall. My two top performers from tonight were Miles Jack, first and foremost, at that inside linebacker position. You know, he's usually an outside linebacker, usually used to rushing the passer or dropping in the coverage on the outside, but at that inside spot, he's able to use his sideline to sideline kind of athleticism, agility. I think if we were tracking up in the press box, probably in the first 10, 15 plays, he probably had six or seven tackles on those 15 plays. I mean, just an incredible, incredible, incredible athlete to watch. And again, he's going to be the star of this team, maybe even more so than Hundley if he keeps playing like this and if he keeps staying at that inside linebacker spot in that 4 2 5. The other guy that I think deserves a shout out is offensive lineman Puasi Mwala. Uh, he handled Kylie Fitz tonight, which is no easy task. I mean, given the way Kylie Fitz ended the spring ball, Kylie was running around tackles all week long and the last two weeks really, you know, getting by Puasi, getting by Malcolm, getting by everybody. And Puasi really handled him well tonight. I think it was a real nice bounce back day for him and something to really grow from after an up and down kind of spring this month. One last guy who caught my eye was Jake Brendel. Um, you know, he's been pretty solid all spring long, just as you'd expect. But, you know, the offensive line had a little bit of trouble today. I know Malcolm Bunch uh, looked a little slow on the outside. He played right tackle. Um, you know, the other guy, Alex Redmond got a little time. But I thought Jake Brendel was really the, the rock that they needed him to be. Uh, you know, he got beat a few times early by Kenny Clark when they were going head-to-head. -head. And then from there, I didn't really see Clark that much. And I think that's a, a, a lot of that credit goes to Jake Brendel, who is very clearly going to be the leader of that offensive line this year. That'll wrap up our coverage from UCLA's spring scrimmage and spring entirely. Uh, thanks for watching all, all month long. We, we promise we'll be back in the fall for the, for the Cover 2 recap, but maybe we'll be back a little sooner than that. As always, you can follow Ryan's coverage of UCLA, even in the offseason, uh, at Ryan underscore Karchi on Twitter and at OCregister.com. You can follow me on Twitter at EdwardLewisBSR and at BruinSportsWork.com. Till the next time, thanks for tuning in to the Cover 2 recap.